Health assessment. Purpose of the health assessment is to establish the nurse-patient relationship, gather data about the patient's general health status, identify patient strengths, identify actual and potential health problems, and establish a base for the nursing process. Four types of health assessments that we'll talk about, comprehensive, ongoing, partial, and focused and emergency. So comprehensive is conducted upon the admission to the healthcare facility. Remember, it's the broad head to toe assessment. It includes a complete health history and a physical assessment. And then that becomes your baseline for comparison while the person's under your care. Uh, next is the ongoing partial or a follow-up. That's what, probably what you hear most is follow-up. It's conducted at regular intervals. An example would be at the beginning of each home health visit or each hospital shift during the care of the patient. So this type of assessment concentrates on identified health problems to monitor the positive or negative changes and evaluate the effectiveness of interventions. So think about somebody that came in with pneumonia you're, you're going to do your regular comprehensive head to toe when they first come in, and then you're going to do more, your ongoing partial is going to be more focused on their lungs and whether or not antibiotic therapy is effective. You'll be checking their O2 sites after respiratory therapy comes in, etc. So the focus, we just kind of hit on that. Conducted to assess a specific problem, an example is if a person complains of abdominal pain, then the nurse asks about, you know, we're trying to figure out what could be causing this. If we don't know, we might ask about urinary problems, any bowel problems. Uh, your book says allergies because we always ask allergies. You never know. It might be causing stomach ache. Uh, menstrual history, if it's a woman, etc. For the health, health history, and we assess vital signs um, and abdominal structures during the physical exam. Focused assessments are also used to address the immediate and highest priority concern for a patient. Then, of course, you have the lastly is the emergency, and that is a rapid focused assessment that we do when we're addressing life-threatening or unstable situations. And your book says, of course, we always think of airway um, and circulation and breathing. So when encountering a patient with a traumatic injury, uh, such as a, a motor vehicle accident, of course, we would we would first assess airway, breathing, circulation, unless we saw them bleeding, and then we take care of the bleeding. But you see what I mean. It's a very quick, focused, life-saving assessment. The components of a health assessment. So we have, let's see, a health history and physical assessment. Those are the two main things that we do for our health assessment. Health history is a planned communication. The nurse needs strong interviewing skills with the goal of establishing a working partnership with the patient so you can communicate care and concern and obtain the necessary patient data. I have 14-1, page 351 of your Taylor book. Uh, it's called Promoting a Caring Interview. And you know what? That is so important. Because if that person doesn't feel like you're interested or that they're safe telling you the information that they're about to, then they, they clam up. And you, what you want in your interview is to be able to get as much information as possible because that helps tell us. That helps us with our nursing process. It helps us find out, you know, what their strengths are, their weaknesses are, past health histories, um, how this how this uh, illness is affecting them, what's how are they able to function at home. I mean, it, it just opens up the door for everything. Then once we do our health history, think of yourself as a detective. That's what we are. We're gathering the facts, gathering the facts. Then we do our physical assessment. We do all body systems in a systematic manner. We do head-to-toe format and review of systems. And you know what I mean by that. Head to toe, start the head, down to the feet. And then when we review systems, we review the respiratory system, um, the cardiovascular system, the um, uh, nutrition and elimination, that sort of thing. I have also that 
for physical assessment, examination of a patient for the objective data that defines this patient's condition and helps the nurse plan care. So what's objective data you say? Well, that's your vital signs. That's things you can see, feel, touch. It can be reproduced by another person. Now what's subjective data you ask? Well, I'm just reminding you that's things the patient says that we can't know. For example, if I tell you my stomach hurts, you don't know if my stomach hurts. You only know what I'm telling you. Now can you see if I grimace in pain when you palpate my stomach? Sure, that would be objective. But for me to just tell you, that is subjective. Uh, I say, remember, remember the healthcare provider's physical assessment identifies a pathological condition is different than ours and their causes. The nurse's physical assessment focuses primarily on the patient's functional abilities. The purpose of the nursing physical assessment includes the appraisal of health status, identification of health problems, and an establishment of a database for nursing interventions. And remember, our, our patient problems change as the problems are resolved, whereas a medical diagnosis of uh, COPD is COPD, period. It's not going to change. Here's a question for you. The primary source of data for the health history is the patient's significant others. True or false? The primary source of data for the health history is the patient's significant others. True or false? You're right, it's false. The primary source of data for the health history is the patient anytime that can be. So if they can talk, then you should, they should be the ones giving you the information. Now, I will say that my mother had Alzheimer's and I would go with her to the doctor's office because she didn't always know what to ask or she was like the deer in the headlight. She wouldn't remember what the doctor had said, that kind of thing. So I was probably a, a better source of information than my mom was at that time. But before that, she should be the one that you ask because she knows what to tell you. It's her body. As we mentioned earlier, a nursing, nursing, a nursing health assessment, a nursing health, oh my gosh, health assessment <laughs> differs from other types of health assessments. And then I, let's see, I said, for example, a healthcare provider, like a healthcare provider in the sense that our assessment is a holistic collection of information about factors that affect or are affected by one's level of health. An example is how does a person's health status affect their activity level and abilities to, to perform tasks? Their ADLs, can they take care of themselves? Or coping with health issues, loss of function, or a change in their ability to function. This provides the foundations for therapeutic nursing and is used to formulate nursing diagnosis that require nursing care. These assessments are part of the nursing process. So to prepare the patient, you want to consider their physiological needs. Are they in pain? Do they have decreased stamina? And their psychological needs, are they anxious? Explain the two types of assessments, for example, the health history and the physical assessment. So explain it to them so they know what's going on. Believe it or not, a person who may not have been to the doctor very often might think an O2 sat monitor is going to hurt when it pinches their finger. Those are the kind of things that you, you can say, you know, nope, it's not going to hurt a bit. <clears throat> then you want to prepare the environment. Ensure privacy. Show respect. Be sensitive. Provide a gown. Make sure the room is warm and well lit. Have equipment ready. Uh, explaining anything that is unfamiliar, instrument-wise, or that might look scary. <clears throat> like I said, depending on where you're a nurse at could be out in the country, could be people that rarely ever come to the doctor. So you just never want to assume somebody knows everything. You know, that happens to you all the time when people find out you're a nurse. Oh, well, you know all about that. Well, no, I don't always know all about that. And depending on what the situation is, I might be so upset, I need reminded. So just be sensitive and explain things that you'll know. You'll have the old gut feeling. Just make sure people know what's going on. 
keep, oh, I told you about keeping the room warm and assist the patient with undressing if they need it. So patient profile. Where am I at here? Well, let me just go down here. I must have read some from the book. I put down, I put down extra because I take notes. You guys will have these notes too. Patient profile, past life events related to health, education, occupation, environment, um, physical, spiritual, cultural. These are all the things we need to take into consideration. Oh, I know what this came from. Yes. So we prepare the pa patient. We prepare the environment. We get our biographical data. You got to have that. What's their name, date of birth, where do they live? What's their chief complaint? What brought you in today? I always ask that. What brought you in today? Or what can we do for you today? Present health concern, present health concern illness. So do they have any present illnesses? Or, you know, we were asking them what brought them in today. Then we want to ask them. They say, oh, I've not been feeling very good. Well, what's been going on? Well, I think I can't breathe very well. Well, really, tell me, when, when does that happen? Uh, oh, and I noticed it in the morning when I first get up. I can't breathe very well. Well, is there anything that makes it better? Anything that makes it worse, etc. Past health history, that's always beneficial to know past health history and their family history. Then we do our review of the systems as we talked about. Here's the patient profile. <laughs> Ain't that funny? It helps us build. Now I know why I put that in there. It helps us build a patient profile. That's what our patient profile is, what I just got through telling you. We're profiling them. There are some tough, touchy things that you may have to talk about sometimes, such as sexuality. And that's always been hard for me. It just has. And it depends on the person that I'm talking to about it. You know, if they're older, sometimes they're really, really embarrassed about it. Or if it's a man and I'm a woman and they're having sexual problems, then, you know, I, I just guess I want to stress, be as kind and considerate as you possibly can. It can be very, very... Uh, uh, well, it's just so sensitive, and it can be embarrassing. And and if you really want those people to open up to you, you've got to be, you've got to show an inviting nature, you know, a, a calm nature, so that they feel safe and they don't feel like you're going to make fun of them. That's the worst thing ever. Also, some another thing that's kind of touchy I've got on here is note is risk for abuse. You have to have those hawk eyes on to look and see if somebody looks like they might be being abused, so that you can call the appropriate people on that and that's kind of tough too but just think you're you're you could be saving their life and then stress or coping wow that was rough wasn't it i thought i had everything all turned off we want to um make sure that they're able to if they have some stress in their life um i had a lot of stress with my mom and her alzheimer's how are they coping with that what are they doing do they need help are they suffering in silence etc Well, looky here. Here's another question for you. The information from the health assessment is used to formulate nursing diagnoses that require nursing care. True or false? The information from the health assessment is used to formulate nursing diagnoses that require nursing care. True or false? The answer is A. It's true. The information that the health assessments you is used to formulate nursing diagnosis that require nursing care. Preparing the patient for the physical exam. You want to consider the physiological and psychological needs that we talked about. Explain the process. Always explain the process. Always, always, always. Never assume. Explain that the, that the physical assessment will not be painful. That each procedure in in detail as it's conducted i'm going to do this now this is the reason we're doing that and you're that you're going to feel me touch you you're going to feel always always have always let them know what you're doing ask the patient to change into a gown and empty their bladder and then answer their questions directly and honestly preparing the environment agree on a time for the assessment the time should not interfere with meds daily routines or visiting hours Make sure that they're free of pain as possible. Why would we want to do that? Can you concentrate when you're in pain? No, no. 
prepare the examination table, provide a gown and drape for the patient, gather the supplies and instruments that you need, and provide a curtain or screen if the area is open to others. And then the book did list some equipment that's used, like a ophthalmoscope you might have to get, otoscope, snelling chart, tuning fork, percussion hammer, etc. Do a general survey first. Look that person over. What's their skin look like? How do their clothes look? What's their hair look like? Their teeth? How they walk when they came into the room? How are they addressing you? Are they looking at you? Are they looking at the floor? Um, are they clutching things? Are they nervous? Are they anxious? Just give them a give them a good general. You can learn a lot from just looking at somebody. Then we'll collect their vital signs and get their height and weight. And nowadays, we're really interested in the body mass index. Now, these charts are kind of old. Really, the best way to tell someone's body mass index is to get calipers and measure the do skin fold testing, but that's very cumbersome. So we do it generally do it like this. Uh, the BMI is used to determine who's overweight. Uh, it, you want you want to know this too because it is such a big thing. You want to know what's normal, what's overweight, what's obese, and extremely obese. You want to know those. A BMI of 25 or more is considered overweight. When I was in the Air Force, my BMI was 26. Now, I was 5'5". Five five. This is when I, I think I was, um, how old was I? 26, maybe? No, no, no. I was a little bit older. I was older than that. I think I might have been 29, 29 or 30. My BMI was 26. I weighed 126 pounds. And I was five foot five. I was skinny for me. And yet they considered me overweight. I laughed and laughed at that. And you know, guys that are really, gosh, they'd croak if they saw my BMI now. Guys that are really muscular will look like they have a big BMI because the circumference is so big. And well, that's just crap. It's, <laughs> it, I don't care for it myself. There's another way to measure people's health, and that's through uh, your waist. I think that may be a little more accurate, but I'm not positive about that either. But here's what our book says. BMI of 30 or more is considered obese. So be familiar with those, with the body mass index. And here it is again, where you can take your height and your weight, and they'll tell you what your BMI is. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, for a physical assessment, initial observations. This, this uh, scoliosis check makes me think of when I was a school nurse. I had to line up all the kids and have them. The girls got to wear a little bathing suit top. Of course, the boys took their shirts off, and we lined them up to check their spine. So initial observations. What's the posture look like? Body movements. Can you tell their nutritional status? Is their skin pale? How do they speak? What's their mouth look like? And, of course, vital signs. Sequencing of a physical assessment. So we're going to check the skin, head and neck, the chest, the lungs, the breast, cardiovascular system. We're going to check all of our pulses, the abdomen, the genitalia, the musculoskeletal system, and the neurological system. Now, this has them all listed and depends on where you work. I... I never check the genitalia of anybody unless I was assisting a doctor with a pap smear or someone came in with HPV and I was helping them with the pelvic exam. Um, I think we had a fellow in one time who had a, is it torsion testicle? Anyway, so I was there as he was being examined. The physical examination is the physician, that healthcare provider, the physician, the PA, the NP, but we will we assist, and and you know when you're in when you're in labor and delivery, you go in and, and check those ladies. You'll be looking at their pad and their fundus and that sort of thing. So, I mean, there it just depends on where you work at and and what exactly you're going to be looking at. So we do do assessments, but just know that the initial physical assessment is a healthcare provider, a physician nurse practitioner, physician assistant, who's going to be doing that. And often we are assisting. So assessment techniques. 
inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. Do you remember all those? So inspection, visual assessment of the different aspects of the patient. Assess whatever you're looking at. Size, shape, color, position, symmetry. And palpation is examination of different body organs using the sense of touch. You assess temperature and turgor and texture and moisture and vibrations and shape all with the touch. Percussion is the use of sound to examine different body organs. Assess location, shape, size, and density of tissue with percussion. And then, of course, auscultation. Get out those stethoscopes. Listening to sounds produced within different body structures created by movement of air or fluid and assess the four characteristics of sound, and that's pitch, loudness, quality, and duration. Okay, another question. Which one of the following physical assessment techniques is used to assess temperature, turgor, texture, moisture, vibrations, and shape? Could it be inspection or percussion? How about palpation or little auscultation? Which one of the following physical assessment techniques is used to assess temperature, tur temperature turgor, texture, moisture, vibrations, and shape. Could it be inspection, percussion, palpation, aus or auscultation? It is palpation. Palpation is an assessment technique that uses the sense of touch. Inspection is a process of performing deliberate, purposeful observations in a systemic, <laughs> systematic manner and percussion is the act of striking one object against another to produce sound. Auscultation, as you know, is the act of listening with a stethoscope to sounds produced by the body. Patterns used for palpation, percussion, and auscultation of the chest. And there you go. It just shows you that it, even whichever, whichever method you're using, technique you're using, this is the pattern that you want to go by. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. And look, we've got the abdomen, abdominal quadrants and underlying organs. I, I really like this. I've always liked this. <clears throat> so you go closest to your side, right? Right, lower, right, upper, left, upper, left, lower. And then that shows you what things you might be, you might be uh, feeling, hearing, etc. touching. Oh. I've got, in the older adults, you can expect to find decreased bowel sounds and decreased abdominal tone and fat ac accumulation on the abdomen and hips. Here's light and deep palpation. Usually you do deep palpation when you're trying to find an organ. I have rarely, rarely, rarely done any deep palpation. Characteristics of masses determined by palpation. You may find a mass when you're palpating, and here are the characteristics. You'll be looking for the shape and size based on what you feel, the consistency, what the surface of the, palp of the mass is, the mobility, does it move? When it moves, is it tender? Does it pulsate? You can sometimes feel the pulse. And consistency, I think, is like the thickness. How thick is it? These are just all the things you may find with a mass. And here we got uh, palpating the posterior thorax. Oh, excuse me. Excursion. Excursion. So common thorax and lung variations in older adults. You'll find that there's increased anterior posterior chest diameter. Increased in the dorsal spinal curve, kyphosis is what they call that. Decreased thoracic expansion. Use of accessory muscles to exhale. This is stuff you can find in the elderly. Here's a percussion technique. These all came from your book. Remember that? You put your finger down and you tap, 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 tap. 
tap, 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 to see what you can hear. Types of sounds heard when using percussion. We have the flat, a flat sound, it's soft, and it says the example is your thigh area. So take your hand and put it on your thigh, and now tap, tap, tap your middle finger. Then dull is a medium sound, and that's uh, over the liver. That would be a little bit harder to do on yourself. Resonance is loud. So a normal lung, if you're tap, tap, tapping, percussing on a lung, that should be a loud sound. Hyper resonance is very loud, and that would be over an, a person who has emphysema, an emphysematous lung. It's the consolidation you're hearing. And timpani, loud, puffed it says loud. For example, puffed cheeks, puffed out cheeks. Let's try that. Huh. Try that. <clears throat> I think it's cool. I think percussion is cool. Characteristic sounds heard when you're using auscultation. Pitch is ranging from high to low. Loudness would be ranging from soft to loud. Quality would be gurgling or swishing. And duration, short, medium, or long. Adventitious or abnormal sounds. So we have, I took this from your book. It was a picture that I took because they didn't have the illustration. So wheezing, ronchi. I always get ronchi. Ronchi has just haunted me all my life. Ronchi says it's sonorous wheezing, coarse snoring like quality. So I guess we think of wheezing as musical or squeaky. Whee! You know what? I got you. I got a YouTube down there for you to listen to. I don't think I can pull it up while I'm recording. I don't think you can see it. So I'll let you listen to that. Maybe we can play it when we meet together for class. Um, okay, then there's crackles, and you have coarse crackles and fine crackles. And remember that that is um, due to fluid. Fluid is crackles. So if somebody's got... Uh, condensation in their lungs, you know, cons and um, if they've got congestive heart failure and their lungs are, you know, it's left side and their lungs are backed up, you would hear that fluidy, crackly sound. Strider is, us is when the airway is narrowed. That could be from a foreign object or from a lot of mucus and then a friction rub. Okay, so listen to that little video. And then, here's cardiovascular inspection, auscultation, and palpation. I put some pictures from your text in there. Common cardiovascular and peripheral vascular variations are in older adults. They're difficult to palpate the apical pulse, difficult to palpate distal arteries, and dilated proximal arteries. This is in olders. More prominent and torturous blood vessels. They have variscosities, which are common. They have increased systolic and diastolic blood pressure and a widening pulse pressure. Remember that pulse pressure is the difference between systolic and diastolic measurements. This slide shows you positions used during a physical assessment. And you know all of these. Sitting, you know what that is. You just take vital signs. A person should sit about 15 minutes before you take them if you want a true vital sign. Supine, you're laying on your back. Dorsal recumbent, used for patients having difficulty maintaining supine. Sims is an assessment for of the rectum or the vagina. Prone is laying on your tummy. Lithotomy, assessment of female rectum and vagina and vagina using, uh, used for brief periods only, knee chest, assessment of the rectal area, and then, of course, standing. Awareness level. <laughs> Assessing the level of awareness. So, of course, we're going to do time, place, and person. I've got the Glasgow Coma Scale on here for you. So you can see see how we would assess this, what we're looking for. Time, what day is it today? What's the date? What's the day of the week? What's the season of the year? What's the latest last holiday? Something like that. And, you know, we want to take into consideration, too, the, um, 
the health status of the person. If they're demented, you're going to get a little bit different answer, but that doesn't mean they aren't alert oriented, you know, to what they know. Uh, person, what's your name? How old are you? Who came, who came to visit you this morning? Something like that. Oh, forgot place, didn't I? Place. Where are you now? What is the name of the city? What state are we in? <laughs> Just something. Make sure you pick um, familiar things to ask. You know, don't go ask them like, "What's the, what's the capital of Oregon?" Don't be asking them things like that because that's not fair. Ask them things they're familiar with. And that's how you'll tell if they really are uh, aware. Our nursing role in diagnostic procedures. Well, we assist before, during, and after diagnostic tests. We are responsible for other activities associated with diagnostic tests. We witness the patient's consent. Witness the consent now, right? We don't, we don't describe the situation, the procedure, in place of the doctor. They are supposed to talk to the person, but we can witness it. Schedule the test. Prepare the patient physically and emotionally for the test. Provide care and teaching after the test. Dispose of used equipment and transport specimens. Purposes of documentation. Remember, if it ain't documented, it ain't so. I got another PowerPoint that we're going to do on documentation. Identify actual and potential health problems. Make nursing diagnoses. Plan appropriate care and evaluate patient's response to treatment. It sounds like the nursing process, doesn't it? <laughs> and here we are, done with yet another PowerPoint. <laughs> I hope you guys don't feel like this. 